Hello everybody and welcome to Demon Sword. Cheap vs. Real, episode 6 I believe. Now today, we're going to be discussing um, geometry and blade tips. What is good geometry, what is bad, um, some of the basic ones you're going to run into if you're starting to be serious into buying some katanas. Uh, let's jump into a standard size. We'll use the Phoenix Katana for this. Now, the Phoenix Geometry is that of a standard katana you're going to find anywhere. Now, as from the tip shape, you can notice not misaligned, no issues. And I've been using this, you know, regularly in the dojo. Slight wear along the edge, just slight, but it's still sharp. I haven't lost an edge on it at all, and it's been working pretty well. I mean, for a sub 150 sword, that's pretty good in my opinion. Now, would I classify this spring steel in the same area as the Tenchi sword? No, I would not. But this is standard geometry. Now, here you can see the shiny parts I discussed earlier about it. That's from a little bit of wear, uh, from where the uh, Sago, I'm not sorry, uh, the Seiya, is holding it too tightly as it draws out. And by the way, I have not oiled or cleaned this since the day I've gotten it, and just been heavily using it. So, surprisingly, rust resistant. I do kind of like that coating effect. So, standard geometry. Okay, so all of you can see it, hopefully. That's a, just basic curve. Now we're going to go into the more advanced. This is what I would classify as medium cutters. Most katanas you'll pick up are light cutters, like the Phoenix. It's not meant to do heavy targets. It's too light. The, the, the metal structure is not dense enough. This is my Higo, and no, it is not a Chenis Tedchi or a Hanwai Higo, it is a Chetnis Higo, the last one. If you haven't watched the other videos, please do. Note how much beefier it is. This is just a little more exaggerated. Now, comparing the tip of the Chetnis to the other one, please note the diamond shape, the Kisak right here. Please note as it tapers down, it's more triangular like. It's not just a slim profile down. It actually bulges out a bit and then comes in. This blade tip is actually designed to do thrust strikes and not take as much down as, say, uh, the Phoenix blade would. This is a Sanmai laminated katana using the same type of spring steel found in the Phoenix, but it's better forged. This is would technically be able to go into heavy cutter, but it would wear would wear down. Sorry about that. It would wear down fast, supposedly. But I mean, tenchis are made of the same steel, and this is just edge. It's actually a little lighter than the typical tenchi because it's in my lamination. Now, so that's that. I would classify that chetness one as what you are normally going to find for medium, if it has a good tip. And now we bring out our problem blade, the Ryan Sword. would like to point out, after a few uses of it cutting, it is already starting to loosen. The wrap is still tight. Uh, I did do a disassembly video of this on the Facebook. So again, if you follow the Facebook, you get more what I'm talking about, more in-depth on some of these blades. Now, if you follow this, watch as the edge curves right about there. There's a warp in the blade. It, it, it slowly does this and then comes back. That's a bad forge. That means when either they're polishing and roughly uh, doing the shape of this blade, they overdid it on one side and then polished it up and didn't notice it. So that's just them th their quality control. Now if you look at the tip, please note misaligned. It's lopsided this way and that also follows the curve that's off on this blade as well. How is it cut? It's cut fine, but so far on my medium targets, 
but it's starting to wear off some of the black as you can see um, the only problem I've had cutting wise is when I cut I'll feel a little bind on that edge as it comes down now that it's sharp now one of the things I do like about the Ryan sword was its sheath that sheath right there by itself is probably worth about ninety dollars so if I wanted to I'd, re I'd repurpose that sheath I know it sheaths and does everything fine so we've covered light and medium as well as the diamond kisaki which is tip kisaki is the triangular part of the tip on your katana like that so light what do I mean by light? Uh, light blades can cut at one roll, maybe two roll tatami. Soda bottles, um, maybe a bamboo. It's, you know, the one about that diameter. Uh, yeah, about that much within the tatami, without much of an issue, but it can hurt the blade. I want to warn that. Now, a medium sword uh, can do the light parts, all the light targets, but you can go up to maybe three, four roll. To Tommy, and then you can put bamboo in the center about that thick. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the one heavy blade classified that we have, which is our Nananioni uh, Project Katana from Ronin Katana. I finally got to oil it. Man, this, I, I finally can find the Haman too. This thing is sick. Now, you viewed the other swords. Please note, this is a lot beef here than even the chitness in length and thickness. The tip also has the diamond tip style. Let's see if I can get that a little closer. This is an up close look of the Ryan or pff, Ryan Katana, Ronan Katana. Just want you guys to see that. See, there is a Haman there. I I couldn't find it initially. Just had to polish it out a little more. But polishing, I mean, I'm sitting there for hours with a very fine grain on my hand, finger, just doing this light polishing. Uh, there will be a cleaning video hopefully coming out today too as well. So a lot of people have been asking about it. I'm going to deliver. That's what. It's just a lot of things that go on. Now, when you're polishing the sword, now that didn't work. I'm trying to grab the Ujifusa. Now, here's the Ujifusa. This has been, I had to pull it out of its sheet. This has been oiled up. But again, there's a, now that's a serious bend. This blade cannot be used anymore. For, or I wouldn't recommend it. I'm trying to find the Haman on this thing. It's so faint. It's like a ghost. It hides under everything. And the straight lines are just part of the oil I use. I was using, uh, I bought it off of Amazon. Somebody had asked if it's good, so I was trying it. So far, shake it up. The Institute of Asian Arts Choji Oil. All right, came in a big bottle. I've been using that fine. Works well. Um, is there any other specific? type of geometry I haven't talked about, yes. There there are a few swords that are out there that you won't even think exist. So, you realize how this... Uh, let's see if I can get into the camera. Right about here, you see how there's that little line going out? That's where the blade tapers down this way, right? There is actually katanas where this tapers down full flush. So this is, it's not meant for piercing at all, it's only a cutter blade. I think that's a shobu geometry, and uh, the way the fuller, or you know, what we a lot of people call a blood groove, the bohai, which is the lightening method, they're actually double thin ones, uh, two lines, and where they place them totally changes the geometry to have a different style effect. Those are more advanced katanas, unlike the higo here, which is our medium cutter. Sorry, I'm taking it off in the light to make sure it's still clean. I'm going to re-oil these after I'm all done. So I expose them to air. I always change everything up. 